A little later, one of my mentors was the inventor of the super tanker, a billionaire I met in Hollywood, and we became good friends. I traveled all over the world with him, became a partner in some of his smaller ventures, and he told me how to invest money. He had invented a new way to travel, tra made super tankers. He just made them bigger and put a few extra engines in, and he made contracts with Shell and others. Then my next one was Henry Kaiser. I was doing radio shows in San Francisco, and Henry Kaiser was building Liberty ships to take the supplies to our men overseas in the big wars in the Far East. And he called me one day, and he said, Art, I'd like to hire you to get women to come down and do welding on Liberty ships because I haven't enough welders. They were all drafted, and they're overseas in the engineering forces for the Army, Navy, and Marine Corps, and women can do welding. I went to work there. I got women to go welding. I became a, par a partner of Henry Kaiser, and I was able to go with him for the next eight or 10 years all over the world. Then the next one of my mentors, was a familiar name, Bob Hope. We became friends because we both had a lot of interests in the same kind of things, and we built moving picture studios, we built theaters all over the country, and we were in real estate, and we did very well together. So whenever you can make friends with somebody and get experience, can get advice, can get money at times, or can get you even a job, Look for it. Look for a way to impress guys in your same big business if you get into corporations. And above everything else, positive thinking, which you heard about today, is a wonderful thing. I traveled with Norman Vincent Peale for four years and spoke to 15 and 18,000 people at a crack, and I found out positive thinking is wonderful, but it is not worth much unless it is followed by something else that is quite often not mentioned. Positive action. Positive thinking is great, but you got to move, and you got to take problems, and you got to pick up your phone. I was fired as the, radio, as the radio director of the San Francisco World's Fair when the chairman of the board called me in and said, Linkletter, what is going to be the opening of the World's Fair? And I said, I got it all lined up. I said, I got the President of the United States, I got Marine Corps, I got stars. He says, you have no imagination. Everybody does that. I said, well, what would you do? He says, go to the window and look out. What do you see? I said, the Golden Gate Bridge. I emceed the opening of the Golden Gate Bridge. He said, well, you should have thought of it. Well, I said, how is that going to be the opening of a fair on Treasure Island? He said, if you knew anything about physics, you'd know that that bridge is the longest bridge in the world. That's what we're known for. And through those riggings coming up and holding the bridge is a westerly wind and that wind has a humming sound as it goes past each cable. I would put microphones across the whole bridge according to the sound of each one of those cables and we would open the fair using the Golden Gate Bridge as a harp playing California, here we come. I said, Mr. Connick, you're not. He said, Mr. Linkletter, you are fired. I went home at 11 o'clock in the morning. I was out of work. The fair was opening in a month, but I knew all about fairs. I'd been through three of them. I opened my own business. Inside of three months, I had sold all the people who went to fairs were exhibitors on running their shows, and I was making more money than Mr. Connick, who fired me. So that's what can happen, making lemonade out of lemons in my own life, and you too can take those kind of things and find ways to make them work. There are many, many other stories in my life I could tell you about, but basically it's having faith and having faith in our Lord and having the feeling that if you can help other people on your way up, you're doing something important because what you do for a living is you get a living for, for a job, but what you do for human beings is a gift of life. And so I got the Humanities Award two months ago, uh, two years ago, from President Wilson, uh, President Bush, and, and that was a humanities work for me for raising money for World Vision all over the world, for making films in Africa, 
and saving the kids on AIDS in many parts of Africa. And so I became something after the death of my daughter, 20 years of age, my darling youngest daughter, jumped off of her studio apartment building and killed herself under the influence of LSD. I went to Washington and President Nixon made me a member of the Drug Abuse Commission. I became later an ambassador to Australia uh, under President Reagan and that started me off a terrible tragedy helping to save young people and make something of it as Larry King did when he had a heart problem and became a foundation for heart people. And so, when you ask me the question, as many people do, the one question I hear, when are you going to retire? I said, I have a book out called Make the Rest of Your Life the Best of Your Life. It's a big book full of everything from finance to sex appeal. It has your attitude. It has how to plan the years of your life from 40 on so that you have a great life. And it was dedicated to the baby boomers, 76 million who will be getting into, ad, into, the, into the retirement thing this next year. And that book is the book that I'm telling you about, that you've talked about, that is a great thing for you, for your mother and dad, and for your children even, because it was made up of the top scientists in aging, and we have become the encyclopedia for how to age well, and it guarantees you 11 years, if you follow it, of life happy, successful life that you might not have had. So that's my recommendation. I'm going to conclude by my answer, really, as to why I will never retire. I never want to be what I want to be, because there's always something out there yet for me. I get a kick out of living in the here and now, but I never want to feel I know the best way how, because there's always one hill higher with a better view, something waiting to be learned I never knew. So till my days are over, never fully fill my cup. Let me go on growing up. So I'm telling you as you get age older, don't, don't get old, grow old. Go back to college and take courses. Try new things. Look and see what your passion can do, which is meaningful you for you for the rest of your life. And I do thank you for this opportunity to spread my philosophy and my prayers for a great bunch who are doing just the right thing in the right place, and that's right now. Thank you very much.